Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Inside Electronics. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you what's inside an original Kinsinda phone charger. I mean, this is a OEM charger that you get when you buy a Kinsinda cell phone. And let me show you, and probably you may have seen it from the thumbnail itself. You can see it in the thumbnail itself. This is the phone. This is a Kinsinda and this is a charger that they provide with. so to put that into perspective let me get an 18650 battery and that is the size of it this thing is really my f the length of my finger right there and that is an 18650 battery and look at that it's just a little bit bigger than an 18650 battery that's how small this thing is. yet this has all the features. It has a VGA camera. It has 600 milliamp battery, but believe me, it lasts two days. It has dual SIM card. It can. It has memory card. It has uh, FM radio. Like it has everything built in. Okay, see everything built in. So it's basically it's a really cheap solution for you know can you can hide it in your hand. Okay, so anyways, that's the video is not about this phone. Let me uh, keep the phone away for a second. I'm actually charging the phone right now. Okay, charger is there. Okay, the video is about this particular charger. So let's open it and see what is inside. So let's I'm making a lot of videos about chargers these these days. That's because I have a lot of charges lying around. Okay, so that. Oh, look at that. It can come out at any point. And basically, that rust right there is a serious issue. See, see all the, the see all those flakes coming out? Those are actually metal flakes. And that being dropped inside of this is going to be a serious issue if you know it's going to be really bad if that happened this is really corrosion happening inside it's getting really bad and you know but that's not the point let's move on to the video and it has been so used this charger has been so used I cannot even take a look at how much is this thing rated for uh, anyways let's take out the entire thing it's a USB charger by the way no cables and things like that and this is what's inside an OEM Kensinda charger and they even got in my previous video I believe I've shown you guys the Samsung original charger had these grooves to slide in the PCB and even this Chinese cheap one has that I mean and this thing is much much better than the uh, the uh, another one I mean I believe it's high tech or something that I just I just dumped it and I don't have it at the moment and it is much better than that particular thing because it has proper isolation right there if you watch that video I will link that in down below and on the i button up there and that thing was absolute death trap I mean there is no separate separation was not even a thing on that charger but look at this this is a cheap charger that came with a phone and they actually took the time to actually put proper separation between them that is really good let's just ignore that they use a cheap capacitor and things like that they have this thing has really good separation that's a really good thing that alone is just good thing for a cheap charger like this and of course you will seriously have to consider the isolation between the wiring of the transformer but anyways using NEC branded optocouplers and this circuit will be really simple they are using octo based feedback and the center diode that is used to trigger the LED on the inside the optocoupler so basically it's really simple the input goes in and goes through this 1.5 ohms is that 1.5 ohms no it's uh, 
that indoor limiting resistor right there I'm getting a hard time focusing on the camera and go straight to the bridge rectifier and it's rectified by those four diodes it's going to a 2.2 450 microfarad and it's made by a company called that gone maybe and then it has the and it is going straight yep that is going straight to the transformer coil right there and then it is being switched using this switching transistor which is which transistor is that oh yeah that is it's a 13003 see it's a 13003 right there that's a very common thing because usually most of the SMPS controllers like tiny SMPS controllers that I came across uses the 13003 transistor for the switching even the uh, cheapest transistor even the cheapest charger that I opened and even the worst charger that I opened uses the same transistor but on a different current rating and that this thing is actually uh, they actually decided to put some more solder on where the actual current is flowing see that they actually put a lot of lot more solder on those tracks that's a really good thing this thing is actually good except the fact that the transformer and how bad is that I don't know but the first impression is really good for this thing and it uses this transist transistor to switch across switch the primary and when the output voltage crosses a certain voltage certain a threshold voltage this center diode is going to conduct and that initiates the optocoupler that will then trigger this transistor which controls the base of this transistor so basically what happens is that if the output voltage goes above 5 volt or whatever the center voltage right there is rated for this activates this transistor which will turn off the main switching transistor which because there is no input voltage to drive the transformer the output voltage will come back down then the process will start all over again that's a really simple thing that they can do that's a really common way to achieve a 5 volt with feedback and they are having proper very really proper isolation very good isolation with a simple anti-tracking slot and there is no much filtering going on and there is an option for an LED but this, it's not populated and the output capacitor is also made by Huahong <laughs> Huahong whatever that is that brand capacitor and there is another little capacitor right there that is also made by the Hua Hong and I'm seeing some hot spots right there see that browning brown color right there that's happening because of a local localized heating on that particular pin right there so maybe this thing was drawing some current and that is the only reason I can think that the color change has occurred at that point right there so this thing actually is really good for being an OEM charger even though the brand is not that great or that popular being an OEM charger for whatever that Kinsinda phone company is this thing is really good for that particular phone it may, re <coughs> may really work and this I believe from by the looks of the transformer size it is actually rated for 500 milliamps max okay let's test it okay I do have the tester with me so let's test it I'm going to pause for a moment and here is it connected to a USB power meter I will link the video up here and in the description where you can check that full review about this thing so I'm going to plug in my USB load right here and it is currently at 1 amp mode so let's see if it can drive 1 amp of current no, no, it's all, it can only give out 680 and the voltage is down to 3.3 volts. So it certainly is designed for 500 milliamps load. It cannot even drive a 1 amp load. So, and I also forgot to mention that this thing has no uh, capacitor across the output and input. There is no class Y capacitor across the output and input going on. So there is no RF suppression. So, apart from that, this thing 
is good for what it is it's a really good cheap little unit thanks for watching see you in another video